a seller on Amazon, a box contacted me and they said, we wanted, we want to send you a raspberry Pi. And I was super happy because I was starving, still hungry. Welcome back to George's Gadgets, everybody. I'm George, and today we're going to be talking about setting up a buck com or yeah, buck converter, buck downverter onto your Raspberry Pi so you can power your Pi with your printer power supply and not have to have a separate wall wart. Um, it's so you don't have to have one of these guys plugged into your wall along with your printer power supply. I, I think one of the biggest things that I like to think about for Pi is I, I'm recording this in a room separate from where my computer's at and anytime I want to do work on my computer, I have to be over there. Anytime that I want to print something out, I have to take it from here. All the way into here. To avoid having to do this journey every time I want to print something, I decided to throw a Raspberry Pi on the ender and I wanted to power it by the printer, so I used a buck converter. Let's get into it. A box Raspberry Pi 3 kit. It's nicely packaged inside a box. We're gonna see what's in it. I wanna give a special thank you to a box for supplying me with this Raspberry Pi 3. The kit's awesome, it comes with everything you need if you wanna do retro Pi or put Octoprint on this, whatever it is. And the Raspberry Pi 3 is awesome, it works great. Thank you. I'm gonna quickly go over what you need to complete this project. Um, so we're gonna use a soldering station, some soldering paste. We definitely need a multimeter. Uh, I'm gonna use some wire strippers and wire cutters and the Raspberry Pi along with a buck converter, the 3D printed parts, uh, a fan to cool the whole setup. Originally, this video was gonna include setting up Octolapse along with a webcam on the printer and I decided to chop it up into three separate videos. So we're gonna be continuing on and that will come at a later video. We're gonna be removing the power supply from the ender and it's just these two screws that we use to install it. Um, we're actually gonna be taking it apart further later by removing the two screws that are on the case that hold all the, the cover over all the power like terminals. After that, you just remove the, this little plate too. This plate holds the LCD screen on, and we're gonna be sliding our Raspberry Pi right in here. I'm just gonna make sure that it fits. And it does. That's really nice, actually. When you pop the cover off, you're gonna be able to see that the terminals are labeled positive and negative. So make sure that you're connecting the right ones correctly and then strip the wires. This is what I have to do because I can't afford to buy two different colored wires. All right, so this is a George patented method. You take a Sharpie and you just do a black line along one of your wires so that you know the difference between your positive and negative wire. And then we're gonna throw on our circle thingy me jigs uh, so that we can attach them to the power supply. I use my vice grip strippers routinely in every job that I do. You're gonna connect them to the respective terminal, so positive, positive, negative, negative, and then you wrap it up by securing the case back on the power supply. After that, we're going to tin our wires. So you just heat up the wire and then you have the solder. I touch it kind of to the wire and next to it so that I can see it absorb into it and know when it's done. And then we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing to these metal plates. I cut the wire so that it fits exactly on there and doesn't hang over. And then you just heat up the spot that you're gonna to wanna to solder for the, on the buck converter. And you place the solder on there and then it should absorb. But if you see, I'm kind of magical and like the solder doesn't appear there, but see, try again. And then presto change and the solder is there. You're gonna wanna do the same thing to the other side and you're just putting solder on the plates, putting solder on the wires so that you can easily just heat up the wire and then it will attach. So you don't have to mess with a bunch of solder and individually. Uh, this is the method that works out for me. I don't know if it would work out for everyone else, but I suggest using it. And again, you make sure that you're connecting positive and negative to the respective spots on the buck converter. They're labeled. Did you just look at my buck? All right, so now I tested it out, turned it on, and it was powering up. I was pretty amazed because this is the first time I ever did anything like this. 
Uh, and now the first time again, I'm gonna be using this multimeter to measure and make sure the voltage that's coming out is correct. So uh, you need to plug in your black cord to the COM port and your red cord to the 750 AC port. Make sure that the DC voltage is set to 20. Hey Kristen, is there any way I could get your help for this part? I need an extra pair of hands. <laughs> okay, what would you rather do? Which one's less dangerous? They're both kind of dangerous right now. Then don't let me do it. You're gonna be fine. I'm gonna tell you what you can and can't do. This part, I need to see the voltage that's coming out of this, right? So I'm touching black to black, red to red. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you see the numbers up there? Mm -hmm. I need to get that down to five. How I get that from 15. Yeah. Yeah. How I get that from 5 to 15 is I take this tiny screwdriver and you gotta oh, you need something even smaller. So from this point, Kristen just turned the uh, screwdriver left and right until we got to the correct voltage. I think that if you set it at 5.1, you should be safe or 5. Uh, I suggest just setting it 5 and then testing everything out, seeing if you're having power issues. I ended up changing mine to 5.1. Um, so that's what I did. These two and splicing them together. So these cables are going to be for powering the fan. I'm using a 12 volt fan that just spins a little slower to keep the pie cool. And then also I have two cables that are gonna be connected to a micro USB cable to power the pie. So this is the micro USB cable that I sacrificed to the Raspberry Pi gods. And basically I'm doing this because my buddy who's way smarter than me powers his Pi by the GPIO ports and he sometimes runs into power issues. He thinks that there's power safety mechanisms built into the uh, Raspberry Pi powering system so I trust his judgment and I'm going to use that to power it. After that you just assemble all the parts and you make sure that everything fits right. My buck converter didn't exactly screw into the case I use that I'm going to be linking below, but um, I don't know, it works. It kind of gets held in there by the tension of the two posts uh, that hold the pie together. Um, but ultimately, I think that this was a lot of fun and I think it's really beneficial because I like not powering my Raspberry Pi when my printer's off because I have no need for it, even though it takes like little to nothing. But I think that it was extremely successful, a good learning uh, experiment and I'll be doing Octolapse and adding webcams to the Pi after this video. So stay tuned for that. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you all for those who have subscribed. Hit that like button if this was something that you enjoyed or if it helped you out. And I will see you all in the next video.